Okay, guys, welcome to the webinar. Uh, and yeah, today, as I mentioned, we're going to go through uh, different things that you can do through Skyly, like uh, for setting up your campaign and uh, other stuff. So yeah, uh, I'm going to go through some maybe stuff that you know uh, and some stuff that you don't know. It depends like how, how long you're using Skyly, but I think it will be good for everyone to just uh, see a couple of things because Skylight has a lot of features and sometimes those features you can forget about them or just uh, you don't know maybe how to use them which is totally fine that's why we are here today so yeah that's the idea and of course if you have any other questions as i mentioned we can just uh leave it for the qa at the end and yeah, so uh, let's start. I'm just gonna go through through uh, different stuff. We're gonna go through campaign cre campaign creation or settings, and after that, I'm gonna go through smart sequence building stuff, and then move to some um, some features of uh, returning lead back to the campaign and something about uh, the inbox. So yeah, let's let's go. So first things first. Uh, let's just create some some uh, search to 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 go through through stuff here. Uh, so when you're creating a campaign, uh, there is uh, there is an option. Just want to explain a couple of those settings in the in the second step of of the creation uh, of oh I got the sales navigator AI. So yeah, you guys can now use that even. Uh, but I don't know how it's good. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this search URL. And uh, what I wanted to show you is the the second the, the the second step of the campaigns the campaign settings when you're building a new campaign. Um, as you saw, we like uh, made some changes where now you have email settings, LinkedIn settings, the global settings, and generally uh, the settings have not the 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 settings inside of these these uh, tabs have not changed but i just wanted to explain them depending when when should you use them and why should you use them because sometimes what we saw is that people uh, don't use them when when it's uh, good to use them and sometimes they use it when it's not good to use them so i just wanted to go through through this stuff so you guys can understand uh, uh, what why and uh, what should you use um so first things first, uh, some people like generally ask us like, why should I use Discover Premium LinkedIn accounts only? Uh, when you do this, when you click this button here, uh, I'm only gonna discover on this search here, I'm only gonna discover people who have a premium uh, account, meaning they have this badge here. Uh, why should you do that? Generally, I would say you, you should not do that. It, the only thing when, when you should do it is if you're targeting uh, so, something that has a connection with uh, the LinkedIn premium part. So if, if the user needs to have the premium LinkedIn, uh, that's why you should activate this. So you can narrow your targeting and just be sure that if a person, let's say your product is tied somehow to maybe a recruiter or a LinkedIn or LinkedIn premium, and uh, it's better to narrow your search with this. Uh, that's one way uh, that you should use this uh, uh, option. The other is, uh, which which you can test out. I don't know, but generally, if you if you narrow like this, if they have a premium LinkedIn account, that means they're active on LinkedIn, which means it's it's better. It's uh, there's much more a chance of them answering and talking with you. We in Skylead and most of our users don't use this feature. It's very uh, niche specific, I would say, but just uh, to not maybe make a mistake, why should you do this? So this will narrow your search where it will essentially, as I mentioned, move these leads without uh, without uh, the, the icon. It's going to exclude them and it's going to include these guys here. Okay. Um, the other thing is uh, the... Discover leads with open profile. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that a little bit later because it's connected with email. Let's move to the global settings. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is uh, discover new leads only. Uh, this is general. This is default activated with with Sky Lead because we don't want to put leads that you already discovered, so you don't have them in duplicate campaigns. But if uh, why why should you sometimes uh, deactivate this? Is uh, I mean. I know that most people are trying to generate uh, how, do, how do I say new leads through Skylead and they're just uh, creating new searches and etc. 
But if you have already, let's say you, you launched a campaign, let's say one month ago or two months ago, and uh, you want to re-engage the people who didn't uh, uh, reply to you or said uh, like uh, uh, that you should follow them up in, in let's say, one or two months and et cetera, that's when you want to uh, turn this feature off. And that's when you want to target the same leads. That's the use case that we generally do uh, inside of Skylead and uh, other white labels and other users that when when should you use this uh, uh, feature. Uh, in combination with that, uh, I would say also uh, include leads that reply to your message. Uh, this feature here, I just want to also explain is uh, this feature uh, searches every uh, uh, when, when you want to send a message to somebody, it's default turned off. When you want to send a message to somebody through LinkedIn messages, emails, or email uh, through Skylead, uh, meaning uh, you, you're sending that you created a campaign. If we see that you had a conversation before, even before using Skylead, let's say you had a conversation 10 years ago, uh, Skylead will detect that conversation and it, it will not include that lead. It's just to keep it safe because maybe you had a conversation five, uh, uh, like uh, 10 minutes ago and et cetera. So it doesn't like, how do I say, uh, uh, clash with each other. So this feature is good uh, when you're uh, using it with connecting, like with first, uh, like creating a campaign with first degree connections. And uh, some people like generally for me, I have like uh, I have 20K uh, first degree connections, which means I have a very big, uh, how do I say, a pool of people that I can for sure use as an outreach and I can use to to convert them as a client. So from my case, I would probably use sometimes the first degree connections. And it's also good because I'm not using the invite to connect. I'm using messages. So it's it's. Uh, it's using other touch points uh, inside of LinkedIn. So when you're using first degree connection uh, campaigns, uh, generally you should activate this uh, this uh, feature here because you probably with your first degree connections, you had a conversation. As for the discover new leads only for the first degree connection campaign, uh, it depends what you're doing and uh, uh, if you're, uh, re-engaging the leads, as I mentioned. If you're re-engaging the leads that you already connected with them and uh, you already had some conversations with them uh, or or you, you you connected with them, you would then uh, uh, use this use this feature. Okay. Uh, I, I got through this. Uh, the other thing is uh, collect contact information. I wanted also this to explain. Why should you maybe use this and how it's used? I mean, it has an explanation, but I'm just going to go through it and how it works inside of Skyly just to explain to you. So collect contact info is uh, an additional scrape, I would call it like that. We, again, uh, again, depends if you need it or not, but uh, what, what Skyly does, it goes into, let me just go to, to LinkedIn or maybe let's save it if we need it afterwards. Uh, so let's go to my profile. So when you connect with a person, uh, uh, this here, connect info, will show you the information of that person if they leave it to be public. So you can generally get their maybe website, uh, LinkedIn profile, of course, and their personal email or their business email. For me, I put my business email, maybe their phone number, Twitter, or something like that. And Skylight will scrape this if you activate this function here. And this function is only worth it when uh, after connecting because if you're not, 99% uh, of people do not have this information publicly available to second and third degrees. They just have it to their first degree. Some of people even hide it for their first degree. So if you want to collect the info, just so you understand how it works, and it's very important, it says here, it adds a view profile uh, after the invite to connect to just uh, check out what's going on. Uh, to just, uh, because not what's going on, sorry, it's because uh, it, it, you will have their information if you're connected with them. If you're not connected with them, as I mentioned, 99% of people do not allow it to second and third degrees. Um, yeah, and... Uh, the other thing that sometimes happens is uh, when people are using Sales Navigator, they're using sometimes the saved search. Uh, unfortunately, in Skylead, you cannot use directly saved search. 
uh but what you can do just to not have like um how do i say to for your campaign to start working you should click on the save search so i clicked on some save search here and you see the link 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 is very different and that's why it's not uh, working um like maybe in the future we will uh, make it but uh, in in uh, 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 at the end of the no November we will have something uh, uh, on our side that you don't need to save searches inside of Sales Navigator, but we'll keep you posted on that. But if you want to use this search and not create it from scratch, you just have to remove and uh, return the filter back. So or you can just exclude it like here. You will see now that the link will change, and here you go. The link has changed and uh, it is back to the normal link. And just click back. And you have your search that you saved from before. Uh, again, it's a bit of more like just for you to know if you're saving searches for later and etc. And just to you can use it from here. You just need that manual work just to remove and add the filter. Uh, okay, so these are the I would say some basic stuff and just some um, stuff that uh, uh, just wanted to clarify. And I hope you you understood them. If not, just leave it in the QA and, and I'll again elaborate on that. Um, let's now move to the to the smart builder stuff. Um, or uh, yeah, uh, one of the biggest things what what happens is sometimes one of the mistakes I would say that people make in Skylead when they're starting is they're putting the view profile um, as a first step. And then they're putting uh, invite to connect. Uh, it's okay to use it like this, but you need to be aware that uh, that uh, let me just I, I hate it when it's red. Uh, the idea is what you need to be aware is about your limits, uh, like because in Skylead uh, you have different limits for different actions, as you know. Um, but what is important? Let me just open on my on my second uh, second monitor just to show you what the idea is. Uh, if you put the limits of your profile views uh, to be smaller than your invite to connect, for me, it's bigger, but essentially some people just put, let's say 10 to 25 profile views and have, uh, let's say 50 to 60 invite to connects, which means that uh, it's not gonna move to the next step. It's gonna clog, clog your uh, sequence essentially. And it's gonna, uh, it's gonna, it's not going to be the fast outreach. It's going to be slower than intended. You're not going to send them invite to connect 50 to 60. You're going to send them 20 to 44 because they're limited to this part. So it's very important when you're creating sequences inside of Skylead to be aware of these limits because they can be blockers. Uh, with unlimited emails, I already mentioned, like if you want to utilize your outreach and scale it to, to a new level, now you should probably start with emails and then switch to LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to do that big volume with with uh, email outreach, uh, what is also important, what sometimes also happens, so that some people like put it like, um, let's say like this, um, uh, after hour they connect and they want to put again a view profile here and it's gonna be after an hour, which means again, uh, this invite to connect is clogged because what can happen is I'm going to use a view profile here for one lead and then it's going to connect and then I'm going to use an, an, another view profile in the same day, which means I use two view profiles uh, for this, for, for one lead. And again, with your limits, it can clog it if you're not, uh, if you're not using essentially a maximum number, which <laughs> you should be very careful, careful, of course. Uh, so yeah, th that's one of the things that I wanted to mention. At the same time, what also happens sometimes uh, there is a use case, again, if you want to uh, launch your campaign a bit uh, later. In the first step, there is no need to put uh, time delays because if I put here three days, you're going to wait now three days for this campaign to start because it's on the first step and it's going to now wait uh, three days to view profile uh, of that lead. So yeah, just uh, wanted to show, especially these limits, uh, it's very important to be aware of them because if you manage them perfectly, you can essentially utilize Skylight to the max. And that's why I, in uh, in one way, there are, there are smart sequences and conditions here to just use your limits to the max to not have any problems uh, during your uh, outreach. Um, so yeah, uh, and just wanted to again elaborate or show you why um, this, this sequence here can be one of the, the best ones is because 
essentially uh, you're starting immediately like uh, to discover their email and if i have 30 emails connected to skylead uh, it's going to push them here. We can verify around 50 to 60 percent of uh, leads uh, emails now on Skylead, meaning if you have a 2,500 search on Sales Navigator, I'm going to find one uh, 1K emails, around 1K, and I'm going to push them here. Just imagine if I started at first with, with an invite to connect and then emails i would never use the emails of those uh, of the uh, limits of those emails if i if i have 900 emails that i'm sending each day so this this sequence here is the currently the best one if you want to utilize your uh, your uh, outreach to the max if you're connecting more than uh, i would say five five email accounts per, per seat if you're connecting more more email accounts than this 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 sequence is is the one that you you should be using for your um uh, for your volume um other thing that i wanted to mention uh, mention is um emails uh, i already mentioned in the webinar but i'm now going to show you just uh, two or three use cases when when should you you be using emails the best use case for us and for most of the users that we talked and for the data that we saw and mostly through agencies that we see, uh, is uh, generally, I think here it, it's a good example. Yes, this is the one. Um, so we first try, we use use email as a last resort. That's how we call it, is we first try to connect with them or send an email, depending again, what, what you want to do, do. If you want to do the volume, you're going to first try email, then invite to connect, then email. If you want to use the Hopefully, let's call it like that. You can first try to connect on LinkedIn. And um, what we do then is we try to find and find and verify their email. Uh, if we find their email, we send an email. If we don't find an email, we we send them an email on LinkedIn. We even send them an email here. Like when we found their email, if they don't answer to us, we want to try again to send an email uh, if they didn't connect with us. And what is uh, important uh, I have a custom condition here, but you can do it without a custom condition. You can also do it with like a free e email. Um, uh, what I wanted to show you is in email a step, there is a feature that uh, you can use your credits on, on uh, Sales Navigator. Uh, let me just show you. Let's just try with somebody here. Maybe this guy will. Yes. So here you go. I have 128 credits for, for my in-mail. This is what Sales Navigator gives you. It gives you, I think, 50 credits per month, and they can, they can accumulate 250 credits. What most of, I mean, most any other automation tool doesn't, unfortunately, offer you to use these credits. We offer you, of course, the free in-mails, but these other credits, they don't offer. And this is another great way to just use them, is you go to Skyly, you have the feature uh, here, let me connect. This one here, allow, allow paid emails also. So this is gonna use my credits. So you saw here, I have 128 credits. It's gonna use these credits. And why did I put this condition here? I put this condition here to separate uh, the people from free email to paid email. Why did I do that? Is because um, on Skylead, if uh, when you use your credits for your paid email, if it comes to the lead uh, that uh, that has uh, that 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 can be sent uh, a paid email to the lead where where they can receive a paid email only, it's gonna block your campaign essentially. So it's better to just separate these steps into free emails. So this one doesn't use paid email. I'm checking here on the profile if uh, it's gonna if it's, it has the free email. And if it doesn't have any free email, I'm going to use a paid email. And this way you maximize your, your again, your limits. You're not blocking your campaign uh, in any other way. Uh, th this is this, The custom condition does the same thing. Essentially, it just has these steps here, but I just wanted to simplify here uh, this. So you have to be aware if you if you leave it like, uh, like this, uh, if you put it like this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be using uh, free email for the people that have free email and paid email for the people that have paid email, but it's going to block the sequence at the moment when you use all of these, these credits because Skylead needs to wait these credits to be refilled. 
What I also forgot to mention is these credits, if, you don't, if you're not aware, if you're not using this, uh, they get returned if, if a person responds to you. So meaning if I use the credit here for Paul and he uh, responds even with, I'm not interested, uh, I'm going to get back to 128 credits. I'm going to be at 127 when I send him an email. But if he responds even with positive or negative, it's going to return the credit, which means, again, I can send to another uh, user the paid credit, the paid email. Hmm. Uh, other use case, I mentioned free use cases for email, is what you can do is essentially, let's not look at this like I'm just showing you ca cases, is you can uh, put view profile if you wish to do that. Uh, honestly, uh, not many people are using it like this, but you can all, I, I mean, whatever I tell you, it always depends on the industry. That's very important. So you, I always advise you can test it out. Uh, the other way you can use InMail is first to start with InMail and then uh, go to Invite to Connect. Meaning what you can do is here is just separate the people from, um, from um, free, I'm not gonna fix this red stuff just to not waste time. But essentially, you're going to view their profile because if you want to check the if they're free in mail, you have to check uh, like the uh, like uh, if they're uh, if, if the profile is free. Uh, essentially, uh, you're going to separate them uh, and you're going to send in mail here first to to free people to people who have free in mail, and then here you're going to send an invite to connect. This way, you're increasing the speed and volume. I would say. Uh, if you want to do it like that. So you, you're combining essentially email and invite to connect to be sent simultaneously uh, for your leads. And uh, afterwards, what you can do is uh, for the paid email credits, again, if if you want to, I, again, I'm saying use them. Why why should you not use them? You, you pay for them on Sales Navigator. So let's say after three days and the person doesn't connect with me, uh, I'm going to then uh, use here uh, the paid email um uh, part um so yeah this, this is the the second option how you can use in mail and how you can utilize it uh the third option is you can make a separate and this is the the option where um i need to get back is for the linkedin settings uh discover leads with open profile status only what does this mean is let's just turn this off this means when um when uh Sally discovers your leads. We can identify who has uh, an open profile and who ha hasn't. And with this feature, if you turn it on, uh, essentially, again, you're narrowing down your search. So meaning here on Sales Navigator, um, I don't know if I'm going to find somebody like that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have little people here, but do not waste time is essentially... Uh, we 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 have a way to find somebody if they, if they have an open profile, and uh, what you can do is here narrow down your your uh, search to just target those people. Skylight will just import the people with open profile, and you can just use essentially uh, as a first step in mail uh, in the sequence, meaning it can start like this. Uh, so let's just disconnect this and move. Forget about this stuff here. Uh, I can essentially start immediately with this step and it's going to just uh, send emails to those people. After that, you can again uh, connect and do other stuff. Uh, but this this part, I would generally, again, it's a very niche uh, feature. I would generally say do it the, the other way, the other two ways that I mentioned, but you can do it like this. Because again, limits can here uh, block you and etc. Depending how many free emails you have and uh, like it, it, how many free emails you have, nobody knows how many you have. It can depend on the account and etc. So this third option again, if you're just using email, because we have a couple of clients like that, that that just are using email, this is what you can do. Okay, uh, I think I explained everything for the email part. You guys use it. Uh, why not? Uh, why 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 not use that uh, feature when you have it inside of Skylead, especially the paid emails, like you're paying for that on Sales Navigator on LinkedIn Premium, don't uh, waste it. Um, yeah, the other thing uh, that I wanted to show you guys is 
campaigns that where you can personalize more. Again, depends how mu much you know about cold outreach and what you're do what you're doing. But essentially, inside of Scaly, you can use custom variables uh, through CSV files. And custom variables are very nice if you want to go with a more personalized approach. Uh, meaning, um, let's say, for example, for each of your leads, you want to put a different intro. So let's just, let me show you. I made already an example here. So I made like, it's a draft. It's not nothing real. But as for example, for these three profiles here, I extensively did some research on them, and I saw like uh, I saw on this profile here that they 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 posted uh, something about uh, sales and marketing. So, and I can use this variable inside of my message, uh, meaning I can go something like "Hey, first name," and I click this variable intro. I'm going to show you, of course, inside of Skylead. Uh, let's connect. And for each one of my leads, if I uh, populate this intro part, I can make a personalized approach for each one of them, which is, uh, I mean, it's always better to personalize more and more your um, outreach. But of course, if you personalize everything for each lead, then uh, the, there is a question of your time uh, you uh, personalizing to each lead and the volume you can send if you're not personalizing that much. I would always say have a, uh, uh, around 20 to 30% maybe if you want to go with that approach uh, of personalized part uh, maybe just the intro everything else should be like uh, uh, the same for each each lead meaning let me just show you how it would work I need to just download this uh, file we download the CSV uh, and just go to import uh, uh, this one here, test, and let's go next. It asks you if you have these leads, if they're duplicate or whatever, just import them. We go here, create a sequence from scratch. The idea is, let's say, for example, I want to connect with people. I can write, hey, first name. Uh, and there is this my my custom variable intro. Let's connect. Let's connect. So uh, you can see that now I have a well, is there a space I so maybe hit. Okay, um, you can see now that uh, for each of my leads I'm gonna have a different essentially message because it's gonna go for this lead here it's gonna go. Uh, you're going to copy it and you're just going to see, but it's going to replace this intro with this one. So your recent post about how sales and marketing should work together and I can't, and I can't agree more. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea. That's how you can use custom variables uh, there. I know that some of you guys are using databases. You can scrape those databases and use like uh, funding and etc. cetera. We, we have a blog on this. Uh, we wrote it, uh, I don't know when, but we have a blog how you can use uh, personalization and we have like uh, placeholders that you can maybe use or what you should research about your uh, about your leads so you can check out our blog uh, blog here like uh, let's see how it's called but uh, this one uh, how to increase the level of personalization and cold outreach so yeah um, we have a blog and at the end you have like those uh, placeholders or what you should maybe be researching about your leads and if you want to go with that more personalized approach. But what I said, be very careful. Don't go overboard in my opinion. Don't personalize every message. Don't personalize every word. Just maybe one line of one line of text. It's uh, unfortunately sales is a numbers game. So uh, it, you need to find, a, um, how do I say, find a, a line uh, uh, of Perfect enough personalization, but the volume is big big enough. Um, okay. Uh, okay. And the other thing I want to show you, this one I think is one of the, we have it for a long time, but I, I'm aware that not a lot of people are using it, but uh, it can help you be more efficient and automate even more stuff and not forget about leads, is return the lead back to the campaign. What many people are not aware or are not doing it is they're not returning people uh, to a campaign, to a different campaign. Meaning, for example, 
I already created some examples here, but uh, for example, let's say here that, um, let's check my chat what I have. It doesn't matter what I wrote here, what we did, whatever, but let's say I'm I'm selling to this guy and he sell, tells me here how, like, hey, uh, hey, Relia, I'm interested to learn more. Um, what you can do is of course, start here, like writing and uh, telling them, hey, you can do this, you can do that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but uh, what you can do is automate uh, your, essentially your responses again until they again answer to you. Because what happens sometimes is that uh, uh, you answer here to them, like uh, let's say for example, Skylade is a LinkedIn automation and called email software that can scale your outreach, blah, blah, blah. And I write them a message here and I forget about them. And essentially, uh, they don't respond to me. And I forget about this, this lead if I didn't label it and et cetera. It's, of course, label management. But uh, what's, uh, to not waste time to searching labels and et cetera, what you can do is essentially click here, return lead back to the campaign. And I'm going to, you. I can create multiple subsequences depending on what he told me. Uh, uh, so... For example, let's say I have a subsequence that's called follow up, meaning uh, they told me, uh, hey, contact me in two months. Like, I'm not ready for this. And what I can do is click here, follow up. I made just like a, an example. It's not something that you can that you can do it like this. I mean, you can do it like this. Depends what you want. If you want to combine email message, whatever. Uh, what I can do here is select, for example, let's uh, start from here. And I need to follow up uh, him uh, here. And it's going to write him something like, well, it's it's not a good example. I didn't change the text. Let's go for the more info part. Okay. So they told me uh, uh, more. In, I need more info. And I'm just not, not going to write them in the inbox. I'm going to return them to the campaign here and, so, and write and just select this step here because then it's going to send, uh, send them a message like Skylight is an outreach tool that integrates LinkedIn, blah, blah, blah. Uh, worth a chat. Uh, and if they don't answer to me, I can, uh, the, the sequence is going to continue and essentially you don't have to write manually again in your inbox uh, to those leads uh, to get them back to, to your pipeline. I mean, if they told me they're, they're, they need more info or they're interested, uh, why should I not put them here and just follow them up again until they answer? So this is something that uh, uh, that I, I know that a lot of people are not using. Uh, I know that our sales team is using and they're saving a lot of time like like this. Um, so this is something maybe the the most uh, the most valuable thing I can uh, give you on this webinar is probably this part here because essentially you're automating even your your respond parts uh, in Skylead. So yeah, just create these subsequences. What you can do is essentially, uh, and yeah, you you can schedule them because for the let's say that you need to follow them up uh, after two months, uh, I need to send them this message after two months. You can just schedule it here. Like I can select the start date and just put it like in January or what whatever uh, start time and click confirm and that's it. And you don't have to worry about that lead anymore. You're no, you know that after after two months it's gonna it's gonna send them a message and you're going to have them in the pipeline. Of course, you need to create these campaigns and have them active to be working. <laughs> so what's the idea is uh, essentially you create a CSV campaign uh, with just uh, just an, uh, just with your profile URL, for example, just to not have, it, have any, anyone there. So for example, uh, I think I even have, a, have an example here. Yeah, this is my profile URL. Uh, I already like uh, downloaded to make the, make these sequences, but just put my profile URL so the 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 you can move to another step of creating the campaign because uh, our CSV will tell you, hey, you don't have any profiles. But essentially, I put here the the spread the spreadsheet the CSV that I downloaded. I created the name of the subsequence. You can name them differently, like subsequence more info, subsequence follow up, um, subsequence. Uh, 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 interested uh, to to book a demo because what also happens you send them a calendar link maybe uh, and they forget to book a demo like uh, um, and you forget maybe about them why not just make an automatic follow up to 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 ask them hey did you book a book a demo like why should you write it like you can just click the, uh, with one click of a button you can have multiple subsequences and automate even more stuff 
meaning you don't have to waste time uh, typing in the inbox. Of course, it uh, you should not always use this <laughs> because in in some uh, there are specific questions that you need to answer manual, which is totally fine. But you can of course speed up some of these generic uh, questions. So you just call it subsequence um, follow up, more info, book a demo. Um, I don't know whatever like uh, share webinar or whatever. I don't know. It depends what you what you want to do. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just a test. You just click next. Uh, whatever. Keep, remove. It doesn't matter. It's you, so it's not going to send you a message. Uh, create sequence from scratch. And just uh, put, like, uh, yeah, this, this uh, sub-sequences will mostly work for, uh, for, for LinkedIn because you connected with them on LinkedIn. Unfortunately, you cannot send in the same uh, thread uh, uh, through, through Skylead, uh, uh, in, in the same thread through a different campaign. I cannot send like uh, uh, from one campaign to the same thread on the other campaign, unfortunately. But what you can do is like put a couple of like um, message uh, message steps for the LinkedIn and just follow them up if you're connected with them. Uh, you also and create your sequence. I can also show you the example of how you can maybe use, this is why I created this one, how you can use e email, because if you discover their email, uh, you don't have to discover it again. If you didn't discover their email, you can put them first to discover their email when you're returning them back to the campaign. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, you can try uh, email messages or what you can do is put, uh, put uh, a condition here uh, where it splits again, uh, depending what they have. If they have an email, you can send them an email message. If they don't have an email, uh, email, you can send them a regular LinkedIn message. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the biggest things that can automate even more stuff for you. Uh, other thing I also wanted to explain because uh, there is a question. We're going to have a help center, of course, uh, on this. I don't know if it's currently but wanted to explain how campaigns work uh, in Skylead when you have multiple campaigns inside of Skylead. So Skylead, uh, essentially, if I have, let's say, these five campaigns active, uh, Skylead will uh, look, uh, will put the, all of these campaigns essentially into the same pool and it's going to choose randomly who it's going to send to. So meaning if you have campaigns with, like, let's say here, one lead and uh, uh, here, 190 campaigns this campaign will be more prioritized so if you want to push some campaign to be more prioritized just de de deactivate the campaigns that currently can be on stop and just finish finish this one meaning for example if i want this campaign to be uh, uh, the first to be to be finished and i uh, let's say for example these campaigns are active for me i would turn them off and it's going to send send everything that it's needed so just to understand Skylead uh, essentially puts them in all into the same pool and chooses randomly a lead uh, on which is going to start the sequence. Uh, when it's uh, and when it's inside of the sequence, uh, it's choosing uh, more to finish the leads that are already in the sequence. Then, then yeah. So, yeah. I hope I, I managed to explain that. And uh, last thing is the question uh, sometimes people ask is uh, why does my uh, LinkedIn account like uh, sync uh, like uh, uh, slowly uh, it depends on the actions that you're doing uh, with uh, your inbox and your uh, skylight because we have uh, we cannot sync real time inbox because if we we synced real time uh, linkedin uh, it's you you would get restricted or something like that that's why we are not syncing it uh, every 5 minutes or whatever the maximum time or minimum time uh, how much it needs to be synced is 20 minutes but our our algorithm chooses who is on 20 minutes, who is an hour. So my is maybe an hour ago, for example. I'm not that much active, but I know some people have it for one day. Like when it uh, syncs just in, uh, one, once a day. So yeah, it depends how much you're using it. And if it's not sync, you can always click this button here and it's going to uh, like uh, sync your, your messages and it's going to take a bit of time. And yeah, you can just return after 10 or 15 minutes and see if the messages appear. Um, okay, I think I passed everything uh, generally that I wanted to pass. As I mentioned, those are some of the, uh, how do I say, 
some of the general uh, quite, general features and some of uh, tips and tricks on what you can do. We can now move to um, uh, to questions. Just give me a second to to set it up. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Let's let's start uh, start with the questions. Can you go over the inbox specifically? Does it have a way to follow up in future with them? A CRM of sorts. Thanks. Uh, okay, I, I mentioned these subsequences. I think this is a very great way that you can use it. The other thing is, uh, for now, like uh, you can just put labels and just uh, filter here, like the people I need to follow, like this guy, and I'm gonna just use use filters here. Currently, we don't have like um, how do I say? We don't have um, um, tasks uh, like in the CRM maybe in the future. But for now, these are the ways that you can maybe do it. Uh, okay. Are you going to cover step one from a recruiter search result instead of navigator? Unfortunately, I don't have a recruiter here, but I don't know. Uh, you can ask me again in the below, like uh, uh, what is the issue, what, what you would need. Uh, so I can then answer it or just... Uh, Uh, answer okay is it convenient or mandatory to include the view pro profile in the steps of campaign uh honestly i think um, uh, you don't need to include it most of the time uh, we we don't use it and our acceptance rate and everything is is okay uh, uh you can include it but uh, just be aware of those limits as i mentioned um uh, it didn't make any when when we did some some of the testings for invite to connect most of it we saw it didn't make any like uh, how do i say differences if you do a view view profile because essentially when you want to connect with a person you're also visiting their profile i mean how how would you connect so you they are getting a view profile before that uh, in the middle of the campaign you can use it sometimes it's it's not uh, it's not that um uh, bad again Test it out, see what it's working. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, if we are designing a campaign for first level, uh, first level LinkedIn contact, sending a LinkedIn message, is it necessary to include view profile and invite to connect in that case? No, because you're connected. First degree connection means you're connected with the person, meaning you cannot send an invite to connect. So you just need to put a message. You can put a view profile if you wish to do that. It depends on the touch point, if you want to have that as a touch point. Uh, because view profile um, doesn't appear uh, for, at least for, it depends how many. For me, I, I don't get view profile notifications, for example. Like um, LinkedIn is always changing this. Like if, if you're getting a view profile notification, I can, of course, see who view, viewed my profile in the analytics in, inside of LinkedIn. But yeah, you can use it as a touch point. Invite to connect. Even Skylead would not uh, allow you to to do that. How many seats are required uh, for white label? Uh, okay, so for the white label, we we uh, generally like uh, just just a little bit of history, and then I'm gonna answer. First, it was twenty seats. Then it was ten. Then it was around five to ten. So uh, depends what you what you're doing now. It's three to five seats that we're allowing uh, more users. Uh, to have white label, you can contact our support and uh, they can just uh, um, tell you more about it. But you need to have just three to five active uh, seeds, depending again on your situation, who you are. Uh, and we can white label it essentially if, if the NS records and everything goes through in one day, two max, like you can have it ready immediately. Uh, hi, missed the start. Are you recording uh, uh, to attendees? Yes, I think I'm recording. Let's hope I didn't didn't make a mistake. Yes, I'm I'm recording. So yeah, uh, the recording will be available um, probably tomorrow. Can you can you source only companies? There are two types of searches on Sales Nav. So I wonder if Skylight can source companies only. Um, no, because uh, what you can do is, let me just turn this stuff off. Um, you, we do not scrape companies, but uh, that is a good good question because what, what you should do most of the time, again, depends on your process, uh, is you should uh, uh, use account filters. 
and first find your ICP. So you first need to find companies that you're reaching out. Some, uh, sometimes we like go like, hey, let's first find the people um, and not the companies. Like um, I would say just like create filters here, like depending on who your ICP is, like, uh, I don't know, department headcount in, uh, in accounting uh, should be minimum five. Um, and I put an ad other features like uh, company headcount, that's one, one to 10. Uh, United States, uh, and these are my companies. Of course, uh, you can go here and um, save manually and create account and lead lists if you want to be certain uh, who, who you're reaching out to because just to be aware, Sales Navigator search, even LinkedIn search, any other search, it makes mistakes. It puts something here that is not your ICP. It cannot know uh, to the precise point what you're searching because you have these filters. You do not have like i mean they included some chat gpt stuff but i think uh, i don't know how it's good uh, but for now uh, if you want to be specific and to target to not miss miss like to connect with somebody that is not your icp you can just go manually and save stuff here uh, but what you can do is save to the list and uh, just uh, when you save it to the list you can use it uh, to to the to the lead search let me just remove the bit uh, uh, there is a way to just uh, view current employees. I think this is the one. Uh, when I click this, now it's gonna, yeah, it's just for the selected companies that I selected. Now I'm in the lead filters and it's gonna show me employees of those uh, three companies, which again, I can then filter out. Uh, uh, what the hell is going on? You all. Okay. Uh, yeah, they changed the, the interface. But uh, let's say, uh, I can narrow it down even more if I want, uh, meaning uh, like company headcount, I don't know, one to 10. Uh, I mean, I don't want to do that because I have free, free here <laughs> companies, but let's say uh, current job title, I don't know, founder or whatever. Um, so yeah, the idea is you put, put these companies, it found one lead, but I selected three companies. But you understand now, like what you can do is uh, essentially go go first in the account filters, find the lead, find the companies that you want to reach out to that you think are the ICP that uh, you think you can sell to them. You can create that afterwards as a list or view them as, as if you view them in uh, view current employees. I didn't show the list part, sorry. So you go into lead filters. I have some uh, lists here. So you can use account lists. So I saved, let's say, 200 companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Okay. Um, I can use uh, 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 account list here. So I don't know what, what this is. It's prob probably old. But you can see now uh, I, imp I, uh, I am searching for, I have 223 results for this account list. I don't know which companies are here. I didn't see that list, uh, but yeah, you, you know what, what I'm talking about. So this is how you can do it. There is no, no other benefit currently to, to scrape. Uh, I, I don't see if you have any other benefit of scraping companies, let me know why, why should Skyly maybe scrape companies, but this is how you can do it. So yeah, I hope I answered and I'll help you. <clears throat> Can we count how many leads are discovered that have open a link, a LinkedIn account? Uh, if you if you use that's maybe a, a good feature to have, uh, but if you use the 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 setting part that I showed, you're gonna know how many there are discovered. That's that's the ultimate number in the in the what do I say in the uh, campaign level in, in the normal campaign where you're not using the settings to discover open profiles only. Uh, we don't have any filter that I'm aware or any status that you can check, but maybe not not a bad idea to to implement that in the in the lead list uh, to here show maybe something like that. Yeah, so I'm gonna let let the product team know about that. Uh, Yeah, I answered this one also. Is there any data validation option before setting the campaign to choose who we connect or, or validate the data? Mm, I'm not sure for what, what are you asking, but that's that's where Sales Navigator is. Essentially, that's what you're using. Uh, just... Uh, 
here you can select everything. And if you want to be more specific, just create lead lists, just go manually and save lists and whatever. And that's it. I, I, I hope I answered. And does the sequence go back to check who accepted the invite to connect and redo the action? For example, if we set the time between action for one one, one hour, we say send we say send a connection, and in one hour, if they accept, send an email. Or what happens if they don't accept in another hour? Uh, let me just try to read it again to see if I understand it, and just have something here to to, to also explain. Okay, so currently, yeah, I think I understand most of the question. Okay, it's selected for the first degree connections. Let me just go back. We might connect. Okay, so if connected. So currently, uh, if the lead uh, doesn't accept your connection, it's going to go through this flow and whatever you put in this flow, it's going to continue. So it's not going back to this condition and then just continuing here. What you can do essentially is how to bypass this if you want to do it a couple of times. is just like uh, do it like this, like view profile maybe, I don't know, what whatever your steps are in between. After a couple of steps, you can again put the condition if connected and then check if you're connected with them. So you can do it like that and just create your sequence here. That That's what you can do a couple of times if that's what you're asking. Um, so yeah, I, I think I answered your question. Uh, so if I don't have active paid emails, it only sends uh, emails if it's free. Yes, so... Um, it's very important first. I mean, most of, I think 99% of our users are using LinkedIn Premium at least. Uh, you need to have, of course, credits and you need to uh, have uh, uh, have emails. Uh, but what is the idea is uh, if you don't have this activated, uh, Skylead will just uh, send to people who have a free email open profile status. What is important, what people sometimes don't understand, it's a bit, uh, how do I say, convoluted is paid emails can be sent only to people who don't have an open profile and free emails can be only sent to people who have an open profile. Like it can be the other way around or whatever. That's why that's how LinkedIn currently is functioning. And that's why we included the paid emails because before you can just send to people who have open profile, uh, meaning most most of the time in those are people because default i think most of the times those are linkedin premium premium users um but this way you're targeting other people also so yeah uh that's why uh you should you should use paid email you can use we, we included it to be used if you want to do it like this but it can clog your uh sequence uh you can use it in the same um same step what does this mean if i turn it on here and just do it like this it's gonna uh, it's gonna send the free emails to the people that it can send free emails and paid emails to the people that it can send paid emails but the problem is when it arrives to a when it uses the paid email credits it's gonna stop the uh, sending it needs to refresh those credits so it's going going um going uh, uh lead by lead and if it comes to a person that where you don't have credits, it's going to stop the sequence until you refresh the credits. How do how do personalization go for email? What are the standard values I can use without uploading a CSV? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, what is important is uh, what variables you can use uh, is depending what you did. Um, so, for example. If I, no, I can do an invite to connect. Let's just do invite to connect. And let's just, uh, yeah, first for invite to connect. And after that, I'm going to explain it through, through email. But what is the idea is when you're sending an invite to connect, I mean, when you're scraping uh, on this first step, when you're discovering leads, Skylead can only find first name, last name, uh, and, uh, and, and, and. I think one more thing, I just forgot what it is. I think occupation, if I'm not making a mistake there. But um, we cannot scrape everything from here. 
to scrape everything from here. Because why? Because when you go to the lead filters, uh, and let's just put, it doesn't matter, second degree. How is Skylead working? It's just scraping here, the data from here. So it's going like, I take this one and this one. It's not go visiting their profiles. So it's scraping the data from here, depending, of course, what is the search on LinkedIn. It, it scrapes other stuff. Um, but yeah, so th that's how the scraper works. And then uh, it's going to another page and et cetera. When you try to send them uh, an invite to connect, essentially we go to their profile and we scrape the, all of these other stuff. So on the email part, it depends uh, what you did before. Meaning, if you if you did if you visited their LinkedIn profile with a view prof with any other action like whatever action you do uh, uh, here after the discovery, we're gonna scrape every data that you saw for the invite to connect. Connect. If you didn't, uh, if you're just starting with a email message, uh, you're gonna you can just use first name, last name, current company. Sorry, that's one, not the occupation. The current company one is the one that you can use. Uh, okay. Is there any response labeling so that I can measure how many positive responses I received? Unfortunately, no, we have it on the roadmap. That's a great feature. Like we want to do it, like where you can see how many labels you have. Um, the work workaround currently is just, um, let me just check here, is uh, what we have is the count. So meaning uh, I can select all of these here, but I can filter by follow up. So uh, not first, sorry, first do it like this. Follow up, apply filter, select all, and I have like five people that uh, are in this label. So essentially, you can view it through inbox. Through reporting, you cannot do it, but this is how you can do it. Like by selecting, scrolling and selecting all, by selecting here, you're going to know how many labels are. And you can, of course, uh, filter by, by campaign, so meaning for what campaign. So... You can do it, but you just cannot do it through reporting. It's a little bit, uh, you need to do a little bit of manual stuff, 30, 40 seconds, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, how do you make sure the campaign is sending as many messages as possible? Just by being aware of the limits. Like, this is the most important part here. And always check your reporting. Like, that's the most important thing. Like, always check what is happening. I mean, I'm not doing anything currently, so we cannot <laughs> see a lot of stuff here. But... Uh, uh, it's very important uh, to to know here what you're doing and how you're putting steps. As I mentioned, uh, what people mostly make a mistake is putting profile view two times in a day, meaning uh, they make a profile view as a first step. A second is maybe invite to connect. And then again, profile view, like, and everything is done in the same name. That, that will for sure uh, slow down your campaign. Uh, if you're doing it like that. So just be aware of the limits. And when you're creating, just think of this stuff uh, just to be uh, aware. Most, as I mentioned, most of the issues can happen with follow and profile views. I think with, pro no, no, just profile views because everything else here can be done essentially just um, once, I would say, except message, but everything other can be just done uh, once. Uh, okay, I answered this. Can you push uh, the lead uh, in the inbox to CRM via Zap or Webhook? Of course you can. Uh, what you can do is uh, go to integrations here, create a new Webhook, and we have a very nice Webhook now. And we also added like four, four Webhooks here. There's something else. But we have this when label is added. So what you can do is create, uh, let's say for booked call, I don't know, that label. If they book a call, and when I label uh, when I use that label inside of the inbox, it's going to push that lead to the CRM if you connect it through, through Zap or through Make or whatever you're using. So you can do it like that. So that's a very nice feature also. Um, like uh, if people are maybe interested, depends how, what your, again, process is, but this is a nice way to do it, to push people to, to the CRM. Okay. Uh, I answer your questions, I think. If you're designing campaign for first level LinkedIn contact, sending a LinkedIn message is necessary. I, I answered that one. Can you see my questions? I can see them. I answered them. Also, I'm new to Skylead. What source do you recommend to really get an understanding of all I need for Skylead? 
uh, if you're meaning source, like uh, which which type of campaign? And what sources you recommend to ah sources oh okay okay um uh, you can watch um uh, we have a demo on Skylead I think uh, uh, my demo like it's fifteen minutes I think I uh, I held it like five or six months ago uh you can watch that you can of course which I would first recommend is just book a call with our support we're offering a non boarding call for free you don't need to pay anything you just go on the call with them. And ask anything that you want to want to know. They will also show you the the uh, reg, uh, the the basic stuff. And at the same time, uh, what I can always for uh, now, uh, how do I say? Uh, recommend is use the use this sequence uh, to understand the best sky lead. Uh, two two of these sequences here, like free trial campaign with focus on LinkedIn, free trial campaign with focus on e email. Uh, one is focused on on starting with LinkedIn. If you don't want to do the volume game with unlimited emails, then just do this one. It looks something like this. Uh, of course, you can add or remove steps, but this way you're going to maximize uh, out your outreach efforts uh, uh, for LinkedIn if that's the first step. If you want to do uh, email, use this sequence here where it pushes everything through email and then afterwards goes on LinkedIn. Again, add, remove steps, do what you think you, you need to do. And these sequences are the best ones uh, for using all of the limits. There are no blockers. The, the, also the question that somebody asked, how can I know if, the, if something is going to block my campaign? Just try to, how do I say, design your campaigns based, based on the, these uh, templates. So that's what I would recommend. We have a lot of blogs also if if uh, you're new to cold outreach and we have help centers. I think we, we we have also videos. Some of them are a bit older, but we have help centers. We have a support chat. And again, book on the morning call. They will help you understand uh, uh, this stuff, how to do it. So yeah, uh, I think I answered to you. Okay, I think I answered all of the questions. Um, so we're, I think, finished. If you, of course, um, have any additional questions, you can, of course, um, write uh, uh, write to me or to support or whatever, like who, whoever you want, you can write to them. Um, and yeah, I hope uh, this uh, webinar was useful to you guys. Uh, I hope I answered all of your questions, show you, showed you some tips and tricks. Again, I, I'm mostly excited for that one. Return to campaign. I think that's one of the, the one of the uh, the ones that are people not utilizing, and they can speed up the process. Uh, the other thing uh, that I can tease, I already teased it, is that uh, probably at the end of November we're gonna have another feature. Uh, that is correlated with the saved searches that I showed in Sales Navigator. I'm not still going to reveal it, but essentially uh, you're not going to need to, uh, in one way, you, you can essentially uh, push more leads without uh, uh, thinking about it. Let's call it like that. So I'm going to leave you with, with a little teaser there. We're going to have a webinar on that. Also, it's a small, it's it, not a small feature. It's an okay feature, but uh that webinar, I don't know how long it's going to be, maybe 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because I'm going to show use cases on how to utilize uh, how to utilize uh, those uh, that feature. Uh, and yeah, we're going to have that webinar after the launch, like a week after the launch or something like that. So keep you're, you're going to be keep you're going to be posted about that through the newsletter and through the banners inside of Skylead. So yeah, uh, I hope that we helped you with some new stuff that you learned, uh, that you got here. And yeah, see you on the, another webinar and uh, have a great day uh, and uh, keep rocking, keep closing those deals. We have a lot of more things that are coming with Skylead. Uh, just uh, yeah, be there and yeah, uh, try to try to close as much deals as you can with Skylead and play around and test out as many things as you can. That's my, that's my biggest advice that I can give you guys because nothing is unified nothing is the same for for uh, for each uh, industry and yeah so yeah. thank you have a great day and see you guys uh, in another webinar